Uh, good afternoon, my learners. Uh, standing before you this afternoon is uh, Mr. Wambi Eric, and I'm actually going to take you through a session in uh, poetry. And uh, what I have for you this afternoon actually is a, a simple poem on uh, prostitution. I am sure it's uh, something actually not very new uh, in your eyes. So let me take you through uh, the poem uh, by reading stanza by stanza. Uh, like a room in an hotel, uh, you as when booked in. Uh, somebody's uh, really you travel. Uh, like a dustbin, a toilet, uh, to any rubbish open. Prostitute, that's what you are, a public tool. A swimming pool for even the unclean uh, to, to dive in and bathe. A rug, a towel, to rub the dirty clean, uh, to wipe the dripping dry. Tell me who comes to you unless to use to use you, who knows? You are sick. You think if I object. Yet you walk enticingly proudly, uh, thinking they admire you, uh, feeling they are dying for you. Uh, when they laugh and some come to you, you think the magic has worked, forgetting you are a tool, you fool. So I want to think with uh, that poem, um, I'm sure it's not something very new to you. So these actually are some few questions I organized for you, uh, questions and answers. So question number one is uh, identify the speaker and the poem. Uh, for starters, my senior fives, uh, the question really says the speaker, here we want that speaking voice in the poem and not the name of the, of the poet, for that matter. So in my poem here, uh, uh, the prostitute, the speaker, is a first person. First person, me. If you take us back to the poem on stanza 6, it's actually when you'll be able to know that actually it is uh, the first person, speaker. Uh -huh. So if you look at stanza 6, uh, Tell me who comes to you, unless to use you, who knows you are sick. So we are saying that uh, the mere mention of me uh, would actually qualify uh, the speaker to be the first person uh, speaker in our point here. So that is that. Uh, let's go to question two. Question two. What is the subject matter of the point? Uh, here if you look at the subject matter, of course, I refer to that as what, uh, what the poem is all about. Okay? So here in our poem, I would actually say that uh, it's actually a satire. By satire here, I mean a piece of work that attacks human folly. Of course, uh, when attacking that folly, we are meant to draw in you know, some laughters here and there. But even still, even as we draw those laughters, there is a lesson that actually one learns at the end of the day. So here we shall say that our poem is actually a satire that critically attacks the act of prostitution and the person as a prostitute. Okay, so let's go to uh, the third question. Uh, discuss the tone, uh, mood, and the attitude of the speaker of the poem. So first things first, uh, let me take you through the definition of mood. I would say that mood is the atmosphere of the story. So back to our point, um, if you look at the general mood, or rather the general atmosphere, it's actually gloomy. I want to think that our, our, our speaker isn't happy with the very act of prostitution. No wonder he lashes at it, and uh, the persons actually who partake in, that has a trade. So in simple terms, I'd actually be right to say that our mood here in our poem is gloomy. Uh, let's move to the next aspect, uh, that is actually the tone. Uh, for starters, I look at tone as the quality, that quality of the speaker in the poem. Well, if you look at my definition here on um, uh, my presentation, uh, here it says that the tone is the author's attitude 
uh, towards the topic. So if you look at our topic today, it's uh, on constitution, we shall say that uh, it's actually through the speakers that we actually get to know that the tone is bitter. Actually, he's angry for that matter. He's cynical. He seems to be actually attacking that vice that is as old as mankind. Trust me, if you went back to the Bible, I'm sure uh, that aspect of position was there and it's still going on uh, till today. So after looking at the tone of our poem, uh, let's move to the attitude. Attitude. I would say that attitude is the perspective or rather tone of the writer that uh, he or she adopts in a given works of literature. So in our, back to our poem, I would say that uh, the attitude of the speaker is full of disgust, bitterness, anger. For my learners, actually, you can go ahead and uh, see to it that actually you create adjectives that, are, that actually can talk about uh, attitude, tone, and mood. Or better still, uh, one can say that uh, the speaker has a negative attitude toward uh, the prostitute and all her actions. After looking at uh, attitude, uh, what's the other next question? Uh, comment on the effective use of language and style. So when handling this aspect here, I would wish you learners to identify a given aspect, show where it has been used, then go ahead and show its effectiveness. So for starters, um, let me take you through uh, the first device that has been used in our poem. Uh, we have use of metaphors. Uh, let me take you through a simple definition of what metaphors are. Uh, to me, a metaphor, I refer to it as that indirect, indirect comparison of an aspect. So if you look at our poem, um, uh, the poem, actually, the prostitute actually has been has been used. Uh, we can actually see that uh, we have actually used the use of metaphors by the poet where we see him actually referring to uh, a prostitute as a public tool. A public tool in the sense that uh, every person actually who has the, the money uh, with them actually can have actually access to, to her. A rug. Look at a rug. We all know that actually a rug is that uh, piece of you know, used clothes that uh, we use for you know, cleaning our feet. A towel. Look at actually when you shower. Eh? Use that to dry yourself. So in this in this aspect here, I want to think that uh, uh, these examples are being used uh, metaphorically to show how uh, a sex worker has been demeaned by our speaker here. Okay. Another aspect here that has been used is uh, arsonis. Uh, by definition, I would actually say that arsonis is the repetition, and forgive me for this spelling here, I think uh, it's supposed to be repetition of a vowel sound, not repetition. Repetition in the sense of R-I-P-I-T-I-T-I-O-N. So we shall say it's actually a repetition of a vowel sound in non-rhyming words. Uh, when we go back to our poem, you realize that uh, tool and fool actually have that vowel sound in them. If you look at uh, the O, the O here, the double O here, the double O in full. So you'll agree with me that uh, that qualifies for arsonists. And like I had said, uh, when you point out that device, go ahead and show its effectiveness. So the effect of the author, or rather of the playwright using arsonists, uh, it actually accelerates the musical effect. Uh, and that aside, uh, the next aspect is um, we actually have uh, use of irony. Uh, for starters, I would say that irony is the opposite of what, what is expected. If you take me through, uh, if you take me back to stanza seven of the poem, uh, when they laugh and come to you, you think the magic has worked. Forgetting your tool. 
So I want to think that uh, whoever is engaged in this trade, uh, she might think that actually she's actually she's actually dignified. She's actually selling like a hot cake. But if you look at what you want, the poet actually here writes, you'll actually, uh, you'll actually come to agree that um, that actually uh, a sex work only comes in to fulfill uh, the whims of, uh, of the prospective buyer. So in essence here we see uh, the writer or the poet for that matter lowering uh, the sex worker to a tool or better still to a fool. And I want to think with uh, whatever I've actually, uh, I've actually presented for you, you can help me and uh, go out and dig up for other, other stylistic devices in the poem. Uh, before I sign out, I want to leave you with a simple assignment. Um, uh, the question is here, as a literature scholar discuss the effects of prostitution in the society? I repeat, as a literature scholar uh, discuss the effects of prostitution in the society. As I wind up, um, my learners, you know, of course, uh, we are all affected because of this pandemic. My advice to you is simple. Uh, stay home, stay safe, and please adhere to the, mini uh, to the guidelines that have been issued by the Ministry of Health from time to time. Stay well.